Three months after the first U.S. case was detected, the Biden administration is now declaring monkeypox a public health emergency. Joining me now, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci, good to see you today. So the WHO, of course, declared a global health emergency almost two weeks ago. A half dozen or so states and cities declared a health emergency in the past week in the United States. What took the federal government so long? You know, Eric, I don't think it was took so long because a lot of the things that were being implemented were being implemented anyway without the declaration. The declaration, what it does is it expedites a lot of the things that might bureaucratically or logistically get in the way of moving things smoothly. For example, here at the NIH, when we do review of projects and grants and contracts, it cuts through some of the paperwork. Uh, but I think for my own self, from my strong relationship with the community, I think it's important as, you know, there are some practical reasons and advantages to it, but it also, I think, is really a symbolic signal that all hands are on deck on this and we're taking this very, very seriously. And as you know, several things came very closely related to each other. One, the declaration of a public health emergency, but also the appointment of a White House coordinator for monkeypox, Bob Fenton, and a deputy coordinator, Dimitri Daskalakis, who has got an extensive experience, particularly in dealing at the community level. So all of those things, I think, took you know a few days to get together in a sequential manner, but I believe right now, that all things are running smoothly. We've just got to make sure that we get the countermeasures in the forms of diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines expeditiously to the people who need them as quickly as possible. That's really the critical issue. So then let's start on those, right? So let's look at diagnostics. Testing is an issue. It is getting better. Uh, there was CNN, though, reporting from this week, which found technicians at two of the nation's largest commercial labs have actually been refusing to draw blood from patients who might have monkeypox. And that is understandably raising some new concerns about the stigma potentially surrounding the disease. Take a quick listen, if you would. The fact that this is happening is an echo of the earliest days of HIV. We, I thought, had come a lot further. This is a grave dereliction of duty. And now LabCorp's president of diagnostics told CNN last week that the virus is, quote, new, saying nobody knew what it was. Some nurses and doctors are scared of it. Some of our phlebotomists have been scared appropriately of it. And said the company's working on a new policy. Was there a missed opportunity, though, here for the CDC on messaging if we have doctors and lab, tech lab technicians who are saying they're, they're scared of this virus? Well, <clears throat> To, to be frank with you, Erica, I'm not sure what the communication was between the CDC and the companies. I'm sure that they took into account uh, and communicated what needs to be done. But given that there is this issue that you brought up and it's an understandable issue, we certainly got to take care of it immediately because you don't want any of that inkling of stigma that the person that you just had on the film there uh, there's a very good point there. We don't want that to creep into what should be a smooth and expeditious response to getting people diagnosed. So if it is an issue, it should be taken care of immediately. I was unaware of it. Uh, now that you bring it up, that person is absolutely justified in being concerned that we can't smoothly get diagnostic tests done because of any degree of concern. If there is a concern, then the proper personal protective equipment needs to be made available for the people who are drawing the blood. Uh, but, I mean, can you ever, I think the hard part too for a lot of people to wrap their heads around would be somebody in this day and age when we know so much refusing to even take a blood sample. I find that unacceptable. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> there's no doubt. I mean, everybody knows how I feel about that. I mean, I take care of people who have these diseases, so I know exactly what one needs to do or not to do to be able to give them the proper care that they deserve. Let's um, let's take a look at vaccines too, because as we know, there's been an issue with vaccines, vaccine shortage. The FDA is now considering splitting doses to stretch that supply. Would you do you agree with that approach? Oh yes, I, I think if you can show 
And there are studies that do show that, that if you administer it in a different way, for example, intradermal versus subcutaneous, that you can get a comparable response uh, at maybe one fifth of the dose. So obviously you have to go through the appropriate tests to show uh, studies have been reported from 2015 when we were doing the dilutional studies, not only with a dilutional dose of the sub Q, but also with a different modality of administration. So I think it's something worth pursuing, whether they actually are gonna be able to do that, I'll leave that up to the, to the FDA, but to approach that as an alternative way, I very much am in favor of. Um, I also wanna get your take. Um, listen, it has been a, uh, a tough two and a half years, I think for you um, on a number of levels. A West Virginia man was sentenced yesterday to three years in federal prison after he sent threatening emails threatening to kill you, members of your family, because of your work fighting COVID. I'm curious your reaction to that sentence. Well, I mean, I believe that law enforcement did what law enforcement was supposed to do. I don't really want to make any comment about that particular individual. But I mean, obviously and unfortunately, other health officials, uh, me, because I'm such a very visible person, have received everything from harassment, of myself and my family and my children, which is the thing that bothers me the most. But what you heard about the person getting arrested was a credible threat, death threat to me and my family. So uh, that is illegal to do that. The proper approach was taken by law enforcement authorities and the person has been sentenced. So that's, that's all I can say about that, Erica. Dr. Anthony Fauci, good to have you with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure.